Welcome to Dairy News Q&A edition. You ask and we answer. Don't forget to subscribe and to hit the bell and the like button. What are the development team's feelings about the comments and feedback regarding the Valley? And what possible changes can we expect, if any? In general, we really love getting feedback because whether it's good or bad, it tells us how the players are feeling and where we should go with the feature. Of course, when the feature is fresh out, like the Valley was in the summer, um, sometimes you get feedback that is very much related to the fact that the players don't understand it yet, and then, of course, we make changes to make it more understandable if it's necessary. But the feeling of whether it's a good or bad feature will come with time. So we can't really react in panic, like, oh my god, players hate it right now, let's change it right now, because we we'll, might break the game that way. Um, and of course, we do have plans for the Valley. We both have short-term and long-term plans, but you'll have to wait for the next Dairy News to find out what they are. I have always been very curious about how the Daily Dirt works. Can you give a detailed explanation of it? Actually, it would be great to see a whole YouTube video about it. I don't think there's enough there to actually make a video on it because it's quite simple. When you tap the mailbox to open up the newspaper, the game checks all of the ads that currently exist, filter them based on your level so that you don't get an ad for an item that you can't buy yet, and then it shows you a random selection. And that's it. Payday is designed to be played for years, but the players still need to see an achievable goal to keep going. For an average player to start a new farm today, there is so much to do in the game. Isn't it too difficult for a new player to stay engaged? That's a really great question. Of course, players at higher levels have had like the opportunity to experience the new features as we put them out, and they grew in the game as the game grew. Um, for for new players, it's quite different now because there is already everything there for them to experience. We try to pace things out so that the new players don't get overwhelmed. For example, we have the Derby at level 18 and we are very careful not to place the Valley too close to 18 while still allowing a lot of players to play it, right? So it's at level 25. Um, we want the players to be able to engage with the derby and understand how the derby works and play it before having to go on and learn the valley. We also like to give the players options, like for example, if you want to sell something, you can sell it via the roadside shop or through the truck or to the boat or to the town, so that like a new player or really any player can decide what they prefer doing and then they'll just go into their own flow of playing however they like. They don't need to do everything. So yeah, for new players, I guess I'd say like, take your time, go at your own pace, don't panic. All the features will be there when you're able to engage with them. Um, yeah, just have fun. The Valley is a great new area. Have you already thought about the next big thing? The next big thing is more Valley. We're working on it, we're improving it, we really see a lot of potential for the Valley, and we have some good ideas, so stay tuned and keep playing! How does Team Heyday rank, in order of importance, the quality of the game, the quality of social experience, game balance, and monetization? At Supercell in general, we're of the philosophy that if you build a really good game, and you give the players some really exciting options that they want to spend on, then the monetization will follow. Um, the Team Heyday doesn't really place monetization that high when we're thinking of new features. Quality and social experience are basically like the pillars of when we design Heyday, what we're thinking of. Um, and to me, the quality of the game and the game balance are basically interconnected. You can't ha have a good game if it's unbalanced. And if you have a really balanced game, but it's bad quality, it's also not really a great game. The Valley was built with this this principle in mind. Like, we didn't have the monetization as, like, a part of our goals when we were building it. Instead, we, like, wanted to create a feature that the players would play for a long time and have a lot of fun with. That was our main goal. And I think we did a really good job. We want you to stay in the game because it's fun and because you're having fun with your friends and your family and you make new friends and new family. <laughs> did you know that some people meet through the game and get married? It blows our minds. How long is the design process for new features? For example, how many drafts did you go through before you got the final design for the valley? 
It varies. Some features are really simple and quick, and others take a really long time and a few tries to nail down. The valley was a big one that fell apart after a few months, and we had to start over from scratch. We, we decided it wasn't good enough for the players, so from then on, since we restarted the valley, then the design was clearer and we knew what we had to achieve. Um, I can't really say how many drafts it takes because we design features like in small chunks. So for example, we had the design for the fuel system, we had the design for the daily quests, the design for the, the sun points. So everything was a small design and there wasn't one big document that had drafts. The design process is based on how the feature evolves um, I'm not always writing down everything that's needed because sometimes a coder will implement something that they think would work and we'll all test it and decide if it's nice or if it needs some changes. So it evolves quite organically. And that's why we can't give too many details about features that we're working on too early on because like the process is very fluid, the design evolves, and we don't want to promise you something that we are not sure about. What is Rose knitting? Can she drop us her product every day for us to sell? It is a big fluffy scarf for Ernest. He already has 15 of them. And you can't have it, because it's for him. Um, sometimes she makes it for the animals too. I have noticed a large ship at the bottom of the sea at the fishing area. Can we know what it's doing there? Well, you see, a long time ago, Angus and your uncle were fearsome pirates. No, no, just kidding. Um, we have a lot of fun making the game, we just like to put little details like that because it's funny. I mean, think about it, it's not even a sea, it's just a lake. How did it get there? Whew, those were some really good questions. We'd love to do another Q&A to address even more of your pressing questions. So please post them on the forums, on Reddit, on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, send us a postcard, whatever you feel like. Remember to subscribe and hit the like button. See you next time!